So the World Bank uh, and IMF uh, spring meetings for 2019 was finally brought to a close on Sunday with Nigeria, as always, providing a bit of a briefing about all those uh, sideline meetings held by closed doors with officials of the World Bank and the IMF and a number of other development and finance partners. And this uh, is always part of the briefings of all that took place in the one week we just uh, put behind us by the Minister of Finance and a few others, including the Central Bank Governor, Godwin Mayfield. Let's take a listen first to the Finance Minister, uh, Zinab made about what we achieved at uh, these meetings. Take the spring meetings provide for us an opportunity to review developments in the global economy and examine emergent and associated risks and offers an opportunity for us to review potential policy menus to ameliorate the situation going forward. On the global economy, the meeting noted the slowdown of the global economy with a revised global growth from 3.3% um, in 2019. In 2018, the growth was 3.6. 2019, it was revised downward to 3.3, and we hope that it will go up to 3.6% in the year 2020. This is mainly due to a number of reasons. One, there's heightened trade tensions between China and the U.S. There's also tightening fiscal market conditions in most of the developed economies, especially in, in the U.S. There's also softening industrial activity and dampening of global investment. The monetary policy normalization and geopolitical tensions and uncertainties like the Brexit are all policy uncertainty issues that were discussed during the spring meetings. In terms of fiscal policy, government debt to GDP ratios have reached very high levels and this limits the capacity of some of our countries to provide counter-cyclical policies. Consequently, potential growth remains subdued in most of these countries, partly as other factors like aging populations, declining birth rates, and rising barriers to immigration weigh in as, as, uh, as, as uh, risks. The meeting suggested that policymakers in emerging countries like Nigeria should prioritize cost-effective policies that increase the resilience to shock boost overall productivity, raise incomes of the bottom 40% of our citizens into uh, the in income distribution bracket, and involve private sector solutions. Prioritizing a structural reform to reflect country-specific constraints will be critical as identified in systemic country diagnostics and country partnership frameworks. For instance, where regulatory or tax burdens constrain growth, priorities may include better public sector effect effectiveness as well as governance. Or where fiscal policy positions are weak, priorities may include shifting public spending more towards productivity and poverty reduction expenditures and improving revenue frameworks. Also, these reforms are, um, are advised to be supplemented by steps to strengthen social safety nets, to mitigate climate change risks, and to maximize the benefits of new technologies. So takeaway for us, uh, Nigeria, from these meetings is at the IMFC meetings, the managing director requested for a mandate to pursue some negotiations with governors for temporary financing options to ensure that the fund remains r remains adequately resourced by maintaining current resource envelopes of the fund through, borrowing, through borrowed resources. This arose partly due to the delay in the completion of the 15-quarter general review of quotas. And while governors endorsed this, uh, uh, this uh, position, we called for an ambitious timetable for the 16th general review of quotas which should result in increased quotas uh, depending on the shares for dynamic economies in line with their relative positions in the world economy, while protecting the voice and the representation of the poorest member countries. In my capacity as a representative of 23 African countries, I addressed the IMFC and issued a statement calling for normalization of trade relations among the contending parties and called for concerted efforts to support multilateralism 
and avoid perfectionist sentiments. At the G24 meeting, I drew the attention of the World Bank uh, Group to some of the challenges we face in implementing our portfolio, like the implementation of the new environmental and social safeguard framework, which tends to slow down implementation of infrastructure projects, and called on the bank to the, the World Bank Group to reflect on this and do something about this as quickly as possible. We also uh, identified during the engagement at the IMFC the need to focus on global policy agenda. Governors took note of the uh, key policies to anchor the new multilateralism, focusing on domestic uh, policies. Governors underscored the importance of strengthening market competition, encouraging innovation, tackling weak governance and corruption, and meeting the SDGs. Governors underlined the importance of strengthening international cooperation as well as coordination to tackle shared challenges given the potentially damaging effects of trade tensions on global economic development and also on the impact of natural disasters on developing countries. I also participated in the development committee meeting but with South Africa uh, leading and speaking on behalf of our constituency and our constituency comprises of Angola, Nigeria, and South Africa. The discussions were focused on global economic context, on mainstreaming disruptive technology within the World Bank Group, and implementation update on the forward-looking IBRD IFC capital package. For commodity economies like ours, even though commodity prices, including crude oil prices, are expected to be stable at around 67 to uh, between 67 to 70 uh, dollars per barrel in 2019, uncertainty still remains around the forecast. Accordingly, policymakers um, in these countries are advised to increase domestic revenues, increase productivity, especially through clearing of supply constraints, and also to strengthen their efforts to diversify the economy and consciously formalize the informal sector. We are also advised to increase the drive for tax revenues. In the area of disruptive technology, we know that disruptive technology is transforming societies and markets across the world, including in Africa. The World Bank Group is hoping that these disruptive technologies can help Africa increase its productivity, create jobs, as well as reduce poverty. On human capital development, ladies and gentlemen, you recall that at the Bali meetings, when the Human Capital Project was uh, released, many of us were concerned that Nigeria was placed 157 out of 189. And we promised that we would go back home and address this issue. I'm happy to report that we use the spring meetings to showcase what the government is doing in this very important area. We have set up an interministerial working group with representatives of the state governors. And this group is chaired by His Excellency, the Vice President. This group is working and piloting some of the initiatives in the health sector and in the education sector. And of course, you are all aware of the government's social safety net program. The World Bank was pleased with our efforts and promised to offer us continuous assist, uh, assistance. On climate change, in view of the, our efforts as finance ministers, we play we played key roles in steering the economy and managing risks, including risks from climate change. Climate finance was uh, a focal issue. We were invited to join the coalition of finance ministers, a coalition of finance ministers with long experience in climate action, and we are all well aligned with the principles of the coalition. Nigeria endorsed I, on behalf of Nigeria, endorse the coalition principles as one of the founding members. Also remember that we were the first sub-Saharan African country to issue a green bond, which we did in December 2017 for the financing of solar power, as well as, uh, and we are also currently in the process of issuing our second green bond. This time around is in the sum of 15 uh, uh, billion US dollars. This will be done later this year, and this effort is led by the uh, DMO. The second green bond 
will be used for projects that are for the agricultural sector, for the power sector, for the health and water sectors. On the margins of the spring meetings, we participated in, uh, I participated in the Governance Consultative Council meeting of the African Development Bank, wherein we continued with the discussion of the proposal of a seventh general capital increase. This consultation started in December 2018 in Rome, Italy. Governors discussed a number of strategic questions around the comparative advantage of the African Development Bank within the uh, African development landscape. Its strategic focus complementing complementarity between the ADB as well as the ADF and its medium-term plans to strengthen its, de its delivery capacity. Governors also discussed the financial scenarios and measures to ensure financial sustainability. Governors examined what a capital increase will look like for the bank and for Africa and agreed what discussions that we also agreed that discussions will continue. We expect to finalize and take a decision by October 2019. We also met with the World Bank Power Sector team this morning, that was the meeting that delayed us from coming to meet with you, and discussed the way forward on a proposed one billion US dollars Nigerian performance bond loan for the power sector. We agreed to bring relevant ministries, departments, and agencies together to ensure that we advance this, uh, the discussion of this facility. We also discussed the country portfolio performance of Nigeria, which currently stands at 9.8 billion US dollars, with the Nigerian country team at the World Bank country office here. At the meeting with the US Treasury um, and, and um, the President's Emergency Plan AIDS Relief, it's called PEPFA Roundtable. We discussed developments with respect to HIV financing. I spoke with the HIV-specific government measures that we have taken and also our initiative on the Basic Health Care Provision Fund to ensure the most efficient way of utilizing our health resources. The fund ensures that 1% of our consolidated revenue fund, along with contributions from donors, is set aside to fund basic health care needs of Nigeria, would focus on primary health care and, co and also uh, with special emphasis on, on um, cases like HIV. We also held a number of bilateral meetings, and this include one with the delegation, with the, with the director of Africa Department of the IMF, where we updated the fund on not only developments in Nigeria economy, but also a commitment to fully implement the Nigeria Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. The IMF also pro uh, promised to assist us in the area of liquidity management and in sharing lessons and experiences in countries where energy subsidies were successfully managed. Also, on the sidelines of the spring meetings, the governor of the central bank uh, and myself had a bilateral meeting with Queen Mag uh, Maxima of the Netherlands. As you are aware, Queen Maxima is the UN Secretary General's special advocate leading global advocacy efforts to advance financial inclusion.